On BBC One Now, the play for today is a comedy with Gwen Watford and Patrick Troughton as a middle-aged couple who want a life of their own and attempt to push their grown-up reluctant chickens out of the family coop. Here on BBC Two, we're going behind the scenes at Sotheby's, whose shareholders have just received a controversial £61 million takeover bid. But when John Pittman went on his visit, it was just another day. New Bond Street in Mayfair and a real Aladdin's cave. Sotheby's, the world's largest auction house for fine arts. Sotheby's is open house to anybody who wants to sell their treasures. They do deal in objects worth hundreds as well as thousands of pounds, but their reputation is built on bigger things, like today's sale of Impressionist paintings. It's Julian Barron from Sotheby's. What? What did the telegram say? Stockholm on the line to Julian Barron, art expert and auctioneer at today's sale. Well, what is that in Krona now? It's about 10.58, isn't it? Yeah, it's £3,780. No, well, that's what the reserve will be, don't worry. That's what the reserve will be, don't worry. Well, look, leave it like this, that I will, we will put a reserve on it of the equivalent of 40,000 um, Swedish kroner. Yeah, but I mean, if, and I will try and get you 3,800 pounds. If, for instance, there's a bid of something like 3,600, no, I understand. All right, so you leave it in my hands. Downstairs, smaller things are arriving at the public counters. I'd like to put this in one of your sales, if I may, if you can tell me something more about it. Right. I see it's got an inscription on the back. I'll get somebody to come and have a look at it. Could we have an English expert, please? What's, what, what do you know about this one? Yeah. Very little, I'm afraid. You'd rather see Brendan, do you? Do you like it? Do you like it? Yes, I quite like it, yes. So why, why are you going to sell it? Well, I don't like it enough to keep, and I just have to try and have a clear out. <laughs> Security is always tight at Sotheby's. It has to be. Stored in a labyrinth of corridors down in the bowels of the building is property worth more than £30 million. Pounds. Sotheby's exists mainly for the rich and people who were rich but now need to raise capital. But the experts never turn anyone away before inspecting everything that comes in. It might not look much, but it could be worth a fortune. Yes, I'd like to put it in a sale and, and uh, if possible, if you could tell me something about it. Any idea of its value or anything? Well, I'd say it's, it's, by, it's probably by an English hand. It's, it's late, late 19th century. Um, it's not by a very sophisticated hand. It's by a provincial hand. Um, and I'm afraid that what I, what I would say is that in the present state of the market, it would not really be worth your while putting no. it through for sale, I'm afraid. Right, OK. Because okay. it's worth comparatively little, right. you know, sort of 20, 30 pounds. Yes. And you wouldn't even think consider a reserve on it? No, uh, no. absolutely not. No, right. a, I mean, I'm afraid it's the sort of thing that one is giving away right. at the present moment. OK, All right. thank you very much. That was not a garbage mm. picture, that was, but it, it was also, garbage. So, that was garbage, yes. That was sold in New York earlier. Scrutinising the that goods in today's sale. How much do you estimate this? Um, 130, 150,000. 130, it's a very nice one, and the flowers and the colour, very beautiful, yeah. And in very good condition. Yeah. What are you doing? The same uh, estimation, almost same. No. Little Renoir? Yeah. 
No, that's estimated at um, about uh, 80 to 100,000. Well, depends. The people with the money, international collectors and dealers who've flown in from all over the world to bid for paintings worth thousands. What are you, what are you, where have you come from? I come from Cape Town. And what are you, what are you going to bid for here? Well, this morning, sir, we have bitten the lot 35, the early work, very appealing work. Um, Who wants it? One of my clients, a very good client of mine. Put this way, one of my special clients. Do you know at this stage what, what you're prepared to go up to? We have a rough idea, but we'd rather, you know, play it by ear, see how the sale develops and get the general vibe, the feeling of the market, as it were. And then, uh, you know, there's always the magic moment during a sale where they get a second inspiration and probably go a bit more. Depends on the competition. My client will be with me, so I'll be getting, you know, we can have on-the-spot discussion. What, 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 do you think you, what do you think you will go up to um, in, in, in pounds? Well, at this stage, possibly 32,000. No, no, I'm... I've brought this in to show you. piece we've had for a few years. Oh, it's lovely. Yes, that's um, a Worcester sauce boat. Yeah. Has it been in your family a long time? Um, no, it was given to us as a wedding present, actually. Really? Um, yes. So you've looked after it very carefully since well, then? Well, I suppose so. We have used it for dinner parties on <laughs> occasion. Really? You're joking? No. It's... <laughs> you've washed it up with all yes. the other things? Well, it sort of goes in first, but... Um, it's yes. fantastic, because it's in very good condition. Just shows that they really knew how to make things yes, then. certainly. Well, we'd love to put it in a sale, and we think that it might realise something like five, six hundred pounds. Oh. <laughs> confirm it when we've done a bit more research on it. Thank All you right. very much. Lovely, yeah. Ponta La Tour of Grapes, showing on my left, lot one. Two thousand pounds is bid for it. Two thousand. Two thousand five hundred. Three thousand. Three thousand five hundred. Four thousand. At four thousand pounds now. At four thousand. Four thousand five hundred. Five thousand. At five thousand pounds then. At five. Six thousand at the back. Six thousand five hundred. Seven thousand. 7,500. At 7,500 pounds then. Well, at 8,000 now. At 8,000 pounds then. Still at the back, 8,000 pounds. Well, at 8,000 pounds. 8,500. 9,000. At 9,000 pounds then. All down at 9,000. It's against you at the back now. 9,000 pounds. Sotheby's don't, of course, own any of the antiques. They simply act as agents. So people who've handed over valuables to be sold take out insurance. If they've got any sense. Officially, an antique is anything more than 100 years old. But in 1983 AD, the market is drying up. So today, there's money in guns, dinky toys, comics, even jukeboxes. Anything, in fact, that somebody somewhere wants to collect. There always has been a big market for violins. Cyril Jacklin, who's 80, has been making violins for 50 years and has spent almost as long sitting in judgment on the instruments brought in for valuation. Send it back to in in Italy, no, no sale value at all. Same for November the 5th. You get a lot of, a lot of rubbish still yes, coming yes. in, do you? Yes, three quarters of them are rubbish. This is German. 100 to 200. Only got two strings, isn't it? Doesn't matter about that. Oh. <laughs> Why not? We want to sell the violin, not the strings. <laughs> Do you love violins? Yes. Do you? Yes. What oh, absolutely. What is it about them? 
but they're fascinating. Everyone is right. different. You never get fed up with looking at them? No, no, never. This is a Rio, I think. Not the nicest thing. German. Two to four hundred. So do people come in with something marked Stradivarius and think that they've got the real thing? Yes, if they've got a labelled Stradivari, uh, they think they've got the real thing until I said on they haven't. They're false labels. They're made in factories in Germany. Still? Yes, yes. Are they? They've been made for hundreds of years. And they just stick them on? Yeah, they just stick a label in. And do people really think they've got the real thing? Well, they do because they they, they believe the label that's inside. Actually. Can you play the violin? No, no time. No time for that. It's a waste of time. <laughs> a waste of time. <laughs> yes. Well, while while I'm playing the violin, I can be making one. Uh -uh. The Picasso of 1922. Was still life with fish and a newspaper. Uh, 5,000 pounds is bid for it. 6,000, 8,000, 8,000, now 10,000. It doesn't matter about the mess. You just got off the plane. I don't know how to get into it. I've always got more cushions in here, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think my colleague's just going to find... Is it possible to actually lift it out of the box? I think so. Let me put it on the Is floor. It to... I think it'd be easier to get it out if I put it on the floor. Mr. Robert Bowman downstairs. Mr. Robert Bowman, he's our expert, and he'll have a look at it for you. All right. Let's get the rest of this. Can you tell me what it is? Do you know what uh, it is? The artist is Valkyrie, and uh, he's a German artist. And uh, I think the man here would probably know a lot more about her than I really do. Have you got any idea what, what she's worth? Uh, I really don't know. The last appraisal that was that we had on her was in Canada, and it was in '76. And at that time, it was roughly a little over five thousand pounds. Lot of money. Uh, yes, but she's a lovely lady too. Are you going to sell her? I'm going to try. Twenty-eight thousand against you. At twenty-eight thousand, the bid is near me. At twenty-eight thousand, then. Well, at twenty-eight thousand in the front. At twenty-eight thousand. Hold on at twenty-eight. 28,000. Leslie Waddington. Right, well, I've been up to the bond and um, been through a few of my files. And I've actually established who the sculptor is. It's, in fact, a woman. And she's called Claire Jean Robert Collinet. And possibly the reason someone thought that it was German was that it's more than likely that it's an Austrian foundry. Um, I've estimated £1,500 on that. Um, and I would think this would certainly make no. that sort of price range possibly a little bit more. Uh, we were told £5,000. £5,000. I think that would be a reasonable figure for insurance, but I just don't think it'll make that at auction. I really don't. Especially with the present economic climate as it is. It's quite unusual, an awful lot of these are, are, are just timepieces yes. and not clocks, you know, goers and not strikers. And, in fact, this one has got a movement which is very, very like the layout, and that is very like of the um, bracket clocks of the period. Yes. But, 
I think it looks okay. Uh, I think it would probably fetch sort of three or four up to five or six hundred pounds in a set. Mm -hmm. And something which we'd be very happy to put in for. Mm. But you don't think it would fetch more than that? Well, I think it would fetch more than five or six hundred pounds and it would be doing jolly well. Because I, I showed it to the dealer and he, uh, he immediately offered me more than that. Well, I think if we had an offer of much more than that, then it would, I'm afraid, probably be not a, ba not a bad thing to take it. Mm. Good. Mm. Eleven says, for a privileged few, invited to sample some of the wine coming up for sale next week. It's young wine which has to be laid down, but connoisseurs are expected to know what will taste good in five or ten years' time. <coughs> All that tasting and swirling and so on. But no actual drinking. Well, not officially, because this leads to embarrassing scenes for Sotheby's wine chief, Patrick Grubb. We've had one or two, we've had to literally bounce. Um, one gentleman who, who sank rather groggily against some cabinets one day, we had to move him out and uh, some time ago. And once or twice we've had people tend to come in here almost bringing their sandwiches and we've had to ask them to leave, <laughs> not quite. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think most of the people here are genuine uh, enthusiasts, but that way, or either amateur or professional. After a day like this, and you go home, what would you have to drink? Um, more wine. <laughs> Right, well, you order in charge for about 450, I would think. If you if you if you in charge for 500, that would keep it. You wouldn't have to think about it or bother about it for say three or four years. But frankly, as to who it's by, it's incredibly difficult. I don't know what you might. Well, it, it just might be worth. Have you ever taken it out at the back? Do you want to? Sometimes you. Well, I don't know. Have you got suppliers? Uh, it is, the, only, the difficulty about it's easy to take it out. It's rather more difficult to get it back in again. It is just have, worth having a look. I mean, if, if you... I, I'd better have to take it off, but I won't be able to put it back in again. If the experts are baffled by anything, they will hold on to it, check it out in reference books and get a second opinion. The lady with the lamp has done her research. Now the owner gets the verdict. I think it was worth several hundred because people would come in and said to me, What a beautiful lamp, it would fetch a bomb at Sotheby's. <laughs> and, and what's it worth? Only about 50 pounds. They, they researched it, but they couldn't find out, um, you know. What would you have done if it had been worth the thousands that you had? <laughs> Sold it. <laughs> Bit of a disappointment to you, is it? Yes, it is. Very much so. Wouldn't it have been to you? <laughs> yes. What would you have done with the money if it had been worth all that money? Ah, oh, probably had a nice holiday with <laughs> some of it. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, there's always something. Anyway, they sent something else for me. Is that much fetching money? I hope so. Might be something in the attic. People are always saying there's something in the attic. I know, but I don't have an attic now. <laughs> <laughs> there was, hang on, there's something written no, that, there, that's, that's a, just the... That's the framework label. Right. That won't tell you anything, I'm afraid. Mm. No, I tell you what it will tell you. It, will, it tells you that it was framed in Ireland. Yes, I think I remember mm. my mother saying she bought it. So, um, then the chances are that, that, child, that it's perhaps. more likely to be painted in Ireland by an Irish painter. Mm. Does that decrease in time? No. If anything, if anything, it slightly increases it. Because there is a there is a specific Irish market. I mean, there are people who collect Irish paintings. Lot 35, the early Utrillo of 1911. Twenty thousand then. At twenty thousand. At twenty thousand. At twenty thousand. Twenty-five thousand. One place. Twenty-eight thousand. 
30,000. Am I right at 30,000 then? Fall down at 30,000. 32,000. In the second row, 34,000. Thank you, sir. 36,000. Against you in the second row, 40,000, new bidder. 40,000 then. Against you on the right side. 42,000 now. 42,000 on the left then. Against you on the aisle. 42,000. All done at 42,000. Bid now on my left. 44,000, a new bidder. 46,000. 46,000 still on my left, against you on the right. 46,000, against you on the right. The bid is on my left. 46,000. Down to 46. Yo, sir, Volte Gallery. Uh, <laughs> It was you who got it, wasn't it? That's right, yes. We got it in the end. You didn't start bidding until... Until the late. rather late, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Why was that? Well, it may have been academic. Presuming the uh, bits had exceeded our intention, there's no point pushing it out. Did you go higher than you were hoping? Yes, slightly higher, but we have no regrets. We're really happy with the result, of course. What did yeah. you pay for it? 46,000. Yes, if you wanted to sell it, um, perhaps a smaller auction house such as Harvey's in Normaker, Copper Garden, would be able to help you. Yes. But I'm afraid I don't think it's going to be worth a great deal. It's going to be worth under a hundred pounds. Right. Should I give you the card of Harvey's and you could perhaps yes, go there? Yes, please. Thank you very much. Well, I'm going to break it. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, thank you. Lot 34, the Modigliani portrait of Totot de la Gaete, painted in 1917. 100,000 pounds to start this lot, 100,000. 100,000 is bid, 110, 120, 130, 140. But 140,000 then, 150,000, 160. Yeah. Right. Um, I think, um, I th you probably ought to insure them sort of 50 pounds a piece because, of course, I don't know, you'd have a bother to replace them. 50 pounds a knife and fork, or 50 pounds? 50 pounds um, each thing. Yeah. Each I mean, if, thing. if you're thinking in okay. terms of replacing another a pearl, of course, which is appallingly right. yes, costly these days. Yes. Yes. Is it, it fam family heirlooms? Yes, well, it's stuff that's collected, you know, from several families and coming together. It. And it's really a question of insurance. Insurance now, the premium's so well, high, well, it well, becomes well, questionable well, whether it's worth owning it or not, or whether one so, um, locks it up in a bank or what one does with it. <laughs> Have you decided what you're going to do? Not yet. <laughs> Your husband says that, that he's not quite sure what one should do with this, whether to sell it, keep it, insure it, because it's expensive. What, what at the back of your mind do you, do you think oh, would be a bit...? Um, I don't know, really. I think whatever he says. <laughs> oh, he's in charge, is he? Oh, yes. <laughs> 200,000. 200,000 pounds and 210,000. 220,000. 230,000. When you're standing there and all these thousands of pounds, what are you thinking about? How many houses I could buy for some of the money they're spending, I should imagine? You know, it's incredible when you think about, you know, they can spend so many hundreds of thousand pounds on a picture and, you know, it could take all your lifetime just to, you know, to buy your own house sort of thing. You know, so it's incredible how much money there is about, really. 260,000, a new bidder. The bidder's seated in the centre. 270,000, a bid on the telephone. 280,000. Sotheby's staff are now on phones to Beverly Hills, Paris and Tokyo, passing on bids from collectors who choose to remain anonymous. 300,000 in the centre of the room, 310, a new bidder on, the telephone, on another telephone. Does it make you feel envious? Oh, God, yeah, all the time. All the time, yeah, it does, really. I mean, I'd love to be able to buy some of the things, you know, but to get money like that, you know, it's got to be inherited, yeah. <laughs> it must be inherited. 
335 on the right-hand telephone. At 335, the bid is on the right-hand telephone now. At 335,000 on the right-hand telephone. All down then at 335,000. NSV, German. German, 20 pounds. German, 20 pounds. 1900, 1880. Oh, better make it about 1850, I think. You have to guess these things. You know, I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm truly sorry that I can't kind of... I wish I could say that we could sell it for 400 pounds and show you a handsome profit, but the plain truth is we wouldn't be doing a service by doing that. Oh. You know, two to three hundred pounds, you know, is, is an estimate, and I want a reserve price, really, you know, two hundred pounds or thereabouts. The top estimate, that's not fair. We can't do that. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, probably a bit too, but, I mean, I'm giving the bow, bow and case. I mean, it's not a good bow. I mean, it's not even yeah, worth looking at. I mean, uh, in the case, I mean, the whole lot goes. Um, I mean, there's only a chance for two hundred and fifty. Well, I'd, I'd prefer not to, really, because you're only selling a fifty-fifty chance of selling it at that price. I'm afraid they're modern Dutch yeah, delves yeah. and really worth very little. Mm -hmm. It's been it. It's very kind. Not at all. If my car wanted to sell them, would you sell them at um, South Ki uh, at Bel Belgavia? I um, suppose Belgavia. Not they're, really. I'm afraid they're, they're too. I mean, they're sort of the kind of thing that's still being made in in Delft. I mean, they're Dutch Delft, but they're 20th century, right. and that's we can't kind. really sell them even at Belgravia. Okay. Marvelous. Thank you. Thank you. No. Bye. Bye. You are, you are going to be very interested. Well, I'm gonna, I can't. It's, I can't on the phone. I mean, it's just too complicated. I'm bringing holes for the. Last year, Sotheby's had an international turnover of £267 million. Yes, that's all right, yes, thank you. They actually made a loss of £2 million because, like for many companies, the recession came while they were in the middle of a major expansion programme. Right now, there are rumours of a takeover bid by an American carpet company. But the people who work here and take pride in traditions going back to 1744 are hoping that nothing is going to change. Okay. Thanks so much. Oh, and the little Javlensky I wanted to see, lot 54. I'll just give it a Today was a good day. Not all the paintings were sold, but it was, by any standards, a successful sale. Julian Barron took two and a half million pounds, enough to give most people illusions of grandeur. It's, it's very difficult because you can't... How can I put it? If, if one had a lot of money oneself, I think one would relate in a different way to the paintings. I see myself very much in a sort of custodial position, almost like a cu temporary curator of a museum. And I'm handling these extremely valuable things, but... Uh, it, I don't feel that this actually represents, you know, X times what I've got in the bank, or uh, <laughs> minus X, you know. Uh, it, uh, but then you talk to people who actually say, yes, we would like to bid £200,000, and you know that they've got that sort of money and they're ready to spend it, and uh, they're not actually going to have to go out and get a job tomorrow to pay for it. Thank you. 